Israel's ongo ongoing war crimes and crimes against humanity on the people of Gaza. <laughs> Hannah Mermelstein is a member of Adala, New York, the New York Campaign for the Boycott of Israel, and a founder of Librarians and Archivists with Palestine. She is a school librarian in Brooklyn, New York, and has led more than 30 delegations to Palestine. We welcome her. Thank you. I'm here to talk about some of the long-term work that Rifat talked about a couple minutes ago that must be done. When there are massacres in Gaza, people naturally wonder, what can we do? We can and must get out in the streets and protest. We can and must respond to requests to call our congresspeople and the White House, if nothing else, to let them know that their support of genocide has not gone unnoticed. But ultimately, our elected officials and others in power will not change their minds without a sustained grassroots movement. In 2005, Palestinian civil society gave the world a gift with the call for BDS, boycott, divestment, and sanctions. It is a principled, rights-based movement that unifies the groups of Palestinian people that Israel has tried so hard to tear apart and gives people around the world concrete action steps to take. Now more than ever, we see people supporting a boycott of Israel. And now more than ever, it is important to root ourselves in the Palestinian call that started this movement in its demands, goals, and methods. The movement has three demands ending Israel's occupation and colonization of all Arab lands and dismantling the wall, equal rights for Palestinian citizens of Israel, and the right of return for Palestinian refugees. Any... <laughs> Any successful BDS campaign will address one or all of these demands and will not undermine any of them. It's important to note that BDS is a tactic, not a dogma. What does this mean? First, it's a response to anyone who says, why boycott Israel? What about fill in the blank with any country committing atrocities? But nobody in the BDS movement says Israel's the only country in the world that deserves to be boycotted. Most countries, and certainly most companies, probably deserve to be boycotted from a moral standpoint. <laughs> but BDS is a tactic. Palestinians have called for it, and it is effective. We know it's effective because the Israeli government is spending millions of dollars to try to fight it. We can also point to specific successes. Veolia's loss of billions of dollars in contracts because it provides services to Israeli settlements. Dock workers from San Francisco to South Africa refusing to unload Israeli cargo. Artists, artists from Elvis Costello to Cap Power to Snoop Dogg canceling performances in Israel. Roger Waters, Angela Davis, Arundhati Roy, Judith Butler, Sarah Shulman, and so many others speaking up in favor of BDS. Statements supporting academic boycott from the Critical Ethnic Studies Association, the Arab American Studies Association, Native American and Indigenous Studies Association, and the American Studies Association. select companies by both the Presbyterian and Methodist churches, and divestment resolutions at universities throughout the country. The Soros Fund recently selling its shares in SodaStream. Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, and El Salvador withdrawing their ambassadors during Israel's latest not a dogma. This also means that lists of thousands of products to boycott are not particularly helpful. I've seen lists going around that include McDonald's, for example, which is one of the only companies to have publicly refused to open a store in a settlement, and Starbucks, which has a section on their website specifically saying they do not support Israel. So before reposting lists that we see, we need to do a little background work. There are other reasons you might not want to go to McDonald's or Starbucks. But if you're specifically trying to support Palestinian rights, you can check whoprofits.org or try to find out if there are ongoing campaigns about 
particular products. At Dallas, New York, the group I work with has a flyer that highlights 11 companies doing business in New York and why they're boycottable. Some of the flyers are out there for you to take. Some of these are targets of campaigns around the city and beyond. Code Pink has a campaign against Ahava called Stolen Beauty. Jewish Voice for Peace New York and Adala New York are both targeting SodaStream and those who care. Students for Justice in Palestine activists at various campuses have pushed to get their cafeterias to stop selling Sabra hummus. And if subway ads can be trusted, it seems Tribe is growing right now, so we should watch out for them as well. New Yorkers against the Cornell Technion Partnership, NIACT, is fighting against the joint campus currently being constructed on Roosevelt Island. Adela New York has targeted Lev Levayev for years, getting celebrities to stop modeling his diamonds, governments to divest from his company, Africa Israel, and Africa Israel itself to claim that they would stop building settlements. We still show up at Levayev's store in December each year to sing holiday carols. We also conduct creative protests outside performances by Israeli cultural institutions who are sent around the world as part of the Brand Israel campaign. Groups like the Bat Sheva Dance Company and the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. We're often joined at these protests by the marching band, the Root Mechanical Orchestra. Yeah. Yes. And this is important, this singing, dancing, skits, making BDS visible and fun. Flyers that are also comics that people are more likely to take than a flyer with just words. Creativity, strategy, background work, and diligent research. All of these are vital for any successful campaign. Now is a crucial time to get involved in BDS. Not just in a call for the boycott of every company you can think of, but actual BDS campaigns. Join one or start your own. You can be in touch with the BNC, the BDS National Committee in Palestine, at bdsmovement.net. And Adala New York is also happy to help, adalany.org. Thank you very much. activist. Her book, The Hour of Sunlight, One Palestinian's Journey from Prisoner to Peacemaker, won the Middle East Monitor's Palestine Book Award in 2012. Her award-winning films include Darfur Diaries, Rebuilding Hope, and One Family in Gaza, which you will see an excerpt of now. Her most recent book is I Am Troy Davis. And she's currently finishing a film about Bahrain, Jen Marlowe. It's, it's really a tremendous honor to have the opportunity to be a part of such an important and critical gathering. Um, you will be seeing uh, the second half of my short film, One Family in Gaza, or the, the, the last eight minutes of the film. And I just I want to briefly say that when I went to Gaza, which was, um, or the time that I went when I filmed One Family in Gaza, it was just a few months after the assault that Israel called Operation Cast Lead. And I had no intention of making a film. I went to Gaza to stand with people I loved who had just endured this horrific devastation. But I met the family that is profiled in the film and stayed with them in their tent for several days and felt an enormous responsibility to, um, to help them tell their story and to provide a platform on which they could tell their story. And, and so I ended up making the film. The first half of the film, the part you won't see, is the family recounting what happened to them during Operation Cast Lead. So I will summarize that very briefly, um, and, and they, they talk about it in, in, in more depth, of course, in the film. But on January 4th of 2009, right after the ground invasion began, they were in their home um, in the northern part of Gaza Strip, when all of a sudden an Israeli military bulldozer started destroying their home while they were still in it. The mother and family, uh, the mother and father, Wafa and Kamal, ran out of the house with their children. Kamal was carrying his nine-year-old son, Ibrahim, and they were fleeing the house, trying to find some safety. Um, the mother, Wafa, was shot in both of her thighs. 
Um, Kamal, the father, was also shot, and Ibrahim, the nine-year-old boy, was shot. All three shot um, non-fatally. Non um, the mother managed to get the other kids behind a, a sort of a mud brick wall uh, to relative safety, and uh, Kamal holding his injured nine-year-old son were sort of fought, fell and were out in the middle of the road when a soldier came and, um, at close range, shot Ibrahim directly in the face killing him in his father's arms, in full view of his brothers and his sisters. Um, and Wafa and Kamal recount how soldiers used Ibrahim's body as bullet, uh, as target practice all night. Um, and uh, again, right in front of the kid's eyes. The part of the film that you will see is right after the family recounts that story when they're talking about um, the aftermath of living through such horrific violence. And of course, that's so important tonight for us to be thinking about and after tonight, because if the world pays attention to Gaza, it is only in the midst of the violence once the violence subsides, and it never ends, of course, because the structural violence of the siege and occupation is ongoing, even if tanks and warplanes aren't firing. Um, but of course, uh, Gaza becomes invisible uh, again. So I bring you their story.
في يعني فكروا انه يعملوا له يعني شكل بعض التصاميم تحطوا لها مرايا وتحملوا سلاح وصرايش لطيفين زي هذا ابراهيم عمره ما كان عنيف عمره ما كان تبع حب سلاح او دائما مبتسم يعني تحب له الابتسامه فما حبيتش يكون اي نوع من انواع العنف او السلاح او حتى التميز التنصيبي للبوستر تبعه فتح او حماس يعني قلت له يا ابني النجوم اطفال مستقبل الحياه الامل يعني مبتسم
has only brought more suffering, not peace. The mothers and fathers, sons and daughters who have been killed are not numbers. They're not characters in a video game. Their deaths are not to be celebrated. destroys 15,000 housing units and destroys 
hundreds of schools and mosques and dozens of hospitals and universities in less than a month and still get support from the United States. What do you expect from us? To throw roses at the Israeli tanks invading Gaza and destroying whole neighborhoods like Shijaiya and, and, and Khuza'a? The devastation failed to break our will, failed to break our will to continue the struggle. On the contrary, Israeli attacks made us more powerful and more determined to fight Israeli terrorism by any means effective. Israeli attacks have pushed many of us to the point where we have nothing to lose. However, many of us have started to lose hope in the international community and even in the popular support around the world, despite the fact that we can see that more and more people are supporting uh, uh, Palestine. We have lost hope in the international community bringing an end, bringing about an end to the Israeli occupation and bringing about change and forcing Israel to end its apartheid and to allow all people, regardless of race or color or religion, to enjoy equal rights. So as Palestinians, we feel that activists all over the world and the free people have to exert yet more efforts in the streets, in the churches, uh, at schools, at university campuses, everywhere, to boycott Israel, to, to isolate Israel, to oblige uh, Israel to stop its brutality, to stop its uh, racism and apartheid against non-Jewish people in Palestine, and to oblige their government to stop sending uh, uh, tax money and to stop sending weapons to, uh, to Israel, uh, which Israel uses to kill Palestinians. As Palestinians, we feel that if this time Israel, Israeli leaders and murderers are not brought to justice, we feel we're going to be to feel betrayed because every time we have uh, uh, been promised that those people will be brought to justice, those criminals will be brought to justice. What do you expect from uh, Palestinians to do if those Israeli murderers just are not brought to justice? Just wait for another war? Just wait a couple of years to be killed and for our houses to be destroyed yet again? To live a life of a slow death under a medieval, a brutal siege imposed on Palestinians? I say if we are all serious, we should work day and night, heart, body and soul, to overthrow the Israeli tyranny, brutality and racism. will help us stop racism and discrimination everywhere in the world, in the United States, in Europe, in, in the UK, in Africa, in Asia. Because Israel is now the facade of terror and racism and abolishing that will definitely make the world a lot safer and more peaceful. As a Palestinian, I am an average Palestinian a person born and raised in Gaza. If I count the times I was exposed to Israeli brutality and humiliation. I need to speak for weeks and weeks. But in the past month, Israel killed my brother, who is a father of two, destroyed my, ha my, my family house of four floors, six flats, where 31 people live. Israel killed five of my relatives and destroyed 27 houses of my relatives. Israel kept eight of my in-laws and destroyed dozens of, of their houses. Israel bombed the university where I work. Israel bombed the schools where my kids go to learn. Israel destroyed the hospitals and the clinics where we seek t medical treatment. Israel killed scores of people I know and destroyed uh, hundreds of houses for people I, I know and thousands of people for houses for people I don't know also, who all, all, all matter to us. Now, as Palestinians all over the world, we have to act, and we expect the free people of the world to act to pressure their governments, to cut ties with Israel, to stop sending money and weapons to Israel. We have to work to find more, more diverse and more creative ways to empower BDS in order to isolate Israel and to erode its abilities to massacre and kill people. Israel will not wake up, realize they are horrible, and then decide to end the occupation. No occupation has ever done that. We have to make Israel end its occupation. We need to act. We have to act. And we have to act now 
before more and more people are massacred by Israel. Thank you very much.